Hello friends of Golf Course Quality Fertilizer. Uh, in this video we're going to talk about mowing. The most impactful thing you can do on your lawn is the mowing part. Uh, you can make a yard go bad by mowing it wrong or you can make it really healthy by mowing it right. And so uh, that's why it's really important to talk about this subject and all the details involved in that subject. Uh, first let's talk about heights. Heights can vary with cool season turf between two and a half inches to four inches. I like it on the higher side. Remember, anytime we're mowing at a certain height, uh, the lower you go, the higher the maintenance of managing it, meaning watering would be harder with a lower height. Uh, fertilizing might be more frequently with a, uh, a lower height. Um, and mowing will be more frequently with a lower height. So that's all things that will increase as your height goes down. And so think about that when we're thinking about what heights we're gonna choose uh, for our height of our lawn. Uh, First off, when you're measuring the heights uh, off of the blade to the concrete, that's called bench height. And so say for example, it says three inches from blade to concrete, then when we get out in the yard, we'll sink down in the ground a little bit, and that could vary between uh, from two and three quarters to even two and a half inches, depending on how soft your lawn is. And so uh, the only way to really measure your, what you're actually mowing at is after you're done mowing, taking a ruler, sticking in there until it stops and seeing how high it actually is. Then you'll know actual height of cut and you can adjust from there. Uh, mowing does vary through the season. So say for example, we like to mow our lawn at three and a half inches uh, on your most general basis, right? So at three and a half inches um, in the fall, I'm gonna continue as late as I can with that three and a half inches and maybe on my very last mow, I might go down to three. Not super low, we're not scalping it. Do not do that in the fall, please. Just a little bit so you can clean up the yard, if you do it at all, right? So in the fall, we don't mess with the heights very much, even though that's contrary to what everybody else says, but our grass is trying to build energy for its roots. You take away its energy producing tissue and less roots will be produced. And we want the strongest roots for cool season grass to handle a hot summer, right? And so we try to minimize that by not lowering that height too soon and too low in the fall, okay? Now in the spring, when we're starting to wake up, we can kind of cheat a little bit and I can even get away with maybe even a two and a half inch uh, mowing height right out of the, the get-go if I'm at a three and a half because my grass is barely starting to wake up and I can kind of stimulate it to wake up in the spring and get a cleanup. So I'd rather have a shorter height to start off with and kind of sneak it in in the spring, maybe stay at that height a little bit and then bump it up as it gets warmer to get finally back up to my three and a half inches when it's hot, right? And so that's kind of something you can mess with a little bit as far as heights go, but remember, try to get it up to where you normally stay it for as long as you can. So, you know, you might get two, three mowings at that shorter height and then start working your way back up to your three and a half. I can kind of mess with my seeding. If my grass has gone to seed, I might keep it down a little lower till I'm done seeding. Then I'll bump it up a little bit, which is typically when it starts getting warm. And then I can't see those dead seed stems as much uh, going into the, to the rest of the season. So that kind of helps me do a couple stuff to keep it looking good, right? So that's for heights. Now when it comes to collecting clippings, try to not collect the clippings at all if you can get away with it, right? Uh, mulch in as many leaves as you can, all that stuff, but when we're collecting clippings, we're taking away free nutrients to keep soil balanced and all that stuff with the nutrients. And so try not to collect your clippings. I always give somebody a kind of a rule of thumb uh, to try to work them towards not collecting clippings as often. You mow your lawn about 40 times a year. If you collect them 10 times a year, it's probably not gonna be that big a deal. But still, go as far as you can as not collecting clippings, right? And so if it gets away from you a little bit, rather than collecting the clippings, double cut it. Uh, mow it when it's dry or uh, not droughted. Make sure you're not mowing droughted grass, but mow it when it's a little bit drier on the surface. Lift up your little side discharge thing to kind of spread it out a little bit and double cut it. You'd be surprised you can work that grass in pretty good, then you're back on track with that mowing. Uh, so collecting clippings, try not to do that as often as possible. Uh, mowing patterns. Uh, I like to change it. I have four or five or six different directions. I kind of have fun with it. Uh, I do some weird angles sometimes. Sometimes I just do 45s straight away. 
but you want to continue to change that pattern so you're not wearing in uh, spots into the yard and going too much in one spot. You end up tearing up all the thatch that's building that area and you end up with little dirt strips and weird little humpy yards if you're not changing your direction. Also, it helps with the aesthetics because every time you change your direction, you're gonna mow off some grass you didn't mow the last time, you mowed it in a different direction, so it helps a lot. Sneaking in a double cut is pretty nice. It's really nice to make the yard like really pop. And so if you got a party coming up, double cut a, the front yard or whatever it is and it looks really good when you mow in two different directions at the opposing angles. It makes it look really nice. So you can do things like that as far as uh, frequency of cut. Uh, also, you wanna only mow off like a third of the grass at a time. Now that can be really hard. Say if you're mowing it three inches, well that means you gotta mow it when it's at four inches. Well, that's only an inch. Sometimes it's growing almost an inch in a day. So just try to mow it as often as you can. Uh, I try to cheat and I'll do on a five day schedule rather than a, a seven day schedule. Sometimes that's not quite enough. So we have to cheat a little bit farther, uh, but that varies through the year. Uh, you'll get to mow less in the summer when it's hot and that's good for the turf to have less often mowed, uh, things like that. Also, another important thing is don't let it get so far ahead of you uh, because it's actually gonna put more stress on it by letting it grow too much. Think of it as like shaving, right? When you barely have stubbles on your legs or on your face, whatever you're, mo you're shaving, it's easy to do it when it's short, but if it gets long, it tears and it rips and it hurts. Same thing with grass when it's long, it slows down the blade, it's tearing it and ripping it, and it's harder on the turf than when it's able to just go through there with the highest speed as it can get on that blade, nice clean cut. Uh, and it's less stress on the grass as well. So, you know, mowing shorter uh, doesn't help you get longer time to wait to mow the next time because uh, you'll have to mow more often. And then if you wait until it's like normal height to mow it, then you're actually still doing that tearing and ripping and gnashing of that, the grass. So uh, don't do that. Uh, when it gets hot outside, mow in the evening times, not the morning. So it doesn't go the whole day with that stress on it. So you'll want to mow in the evenings uh, when it's hot outside. Never mow stressed turf either. So if it's crunchy or has different colors on it, do not mow it. I don't care how long it gets, let it go until you can get water on it or you have a nice rain event and it's once again soft to walk on, then mow it. And you might have to do a double cut because you had to wait a little while to mow it. So that's real important. If you notice, if you've mowed it and you see these streaks, brown streaks in the lawn where the tire tracks were at, you snapped those grass blades off and now it has to start from the ground again. And so it takes like two weeks for it to recover from that. And while, while it's recovering, it gets these weird spots and mangled things and it almost looks like a disease while it's coming back. That's kind of how turf just recovers from a stressed out situation. So try not to mow it in any stress situations. If so, you'll have to water it uh, a little bit more frequently, not every day, because then you'll get new grass coming back and it'll die from diseases, but you'll have to pick up your watering a little bit if you've already gone through a stress situation like that. All right, as far as fertilizers go, when you're spreading fertilizer and you're mowing, I mean, I like to mow right before I fertilize. That way it's a shorter turf, easier to fertilize on. But if you happen to fertilize and then you need to mow later, uh, you can do it as long as you're not collecting clippings, you can mow anytime you want behind it. Unless you're using a weed and feed. Don't use a weed and feed. It's not really good fertilizer and, and weed killer anyways, and that's a big pain. Uh, when it comes to doing weed killer though, spraying the weeds, you'll have to wait a couple days after you spray those weeds before you mow again. So, you know, typically I try to mow, I'll wait a couple days, I'll spray, and then I'll wait a couple days and mow, all right? So let's see here, spreading herbicides. I think that's pretty much it for mowing practices. Uh, if you have any other questions, you can get a hold of me. Thanks so much for listening.